a revolution, not a coup. And it was not only about uh, the events in Petersburg, but also about all Bolsheviks' revolutionary actions in different cities and towns. In the 1920s, Bolsheviks history constructed process was organized and controlled by the State Commission on the history of the, of the October Revolution and the history of the Communist Party. In my speech, I will use this brief name, Ispat. A lot of researchers considered gathering memoirs about the October Revolution only as one of the Ispat activities. As a result, uh, this issue has not been examined enough. Activity of the Commission was analyzed in the works by Soviet and post-Soviet scientists, Galina Alexeyeva, Nikolai Andruhov, Yenat Lomarenko, and others. But in their researches, they interpreted memoirs as factual material. Uh, there is a rather different view presented in the work uh, by Frederick Gorney. He characterized the gathering memoirs about the October in the 1920s as the first Soviet memory project. To analyze the constructed memoirs about the October Revolution in the 1920s, I took the information about the published sources, newspapers, and magazines at that time. Information about the gathering memoirs process on Ukrainian territory and actual memoirs texts were taken from the magazine of all Ukrainian is part, which was called in original Litopist Revolution. In, I can translate it in English as Chronicle of the Revolution. Also, I use special collections of memoirs. Let me, uh, let me begin an analysis of constructed memoirs about the October Revolution from the characteristics of his part methods of gathering reminiscences. His part sent letters to some people, famous participants of revolution and the party leaders, requesting to write down the memoirs about the revolution. This request uh, provided the detailed instructions of what and how to write. Writing memoirs by special schemes provided writing the correct memoirs. After receiving memoirs were checked in central and local departments of his body and in publishing houses. Then these reminiscences were evaluated as good or require modification of the most important event, events. The final stage was publication. It should be noted that very often his party departments did not get answer on their requests from people. Even twice or five times, reminds were not effective. It was caused since there was no people support to inspire, especially immediately after its creation. The main feature of gathering memoirs campaign was their collective checking. Accordingly, we have a question: What was checked? So, memoirs were checked on what and how the authors, authors wrote, wrote, style, topics, content. To understand what was checked in the reminiscences, I referred uh, to guidelines for writing memoirs. The really first one was created in the 1921. Uh, the first special questionnaire was published in the Bulletin Sparta and in the collection is the book with the Prahe. In English it means newsletter of the Sparta and from the era of Ta and Truth. This article was called the abstract minimum for memoirs. The rough scheme on writing memoirs was proposed in this abstract minimum. It uh, also was its party member Nikolai Batul. This abstract minimum included 14 points. They were not just simple recommendations for, uh, about memoirs. In fact, they were the rules on how to write memoirs. The authors not supposed to focus at a personality. Instead, they ought to write about Bolshevik organizations. Like a proof of this can be mentioned the question about the size of the organization, ways of formation, financing, involving uh, involved of different sectors of society, peasants, soldiers, women, students. Answer, answering these questions made clear for reader what kind of Bolshevik uh, author was, but it left aside author's personal qualities. In 1935, there was, there was developed a methodological essay about what and how to write memoirs. It was a methodological essay, uh, How to Write Memoirs, by Joseph Gellis, which was published in the magazine of Central East Part, that was called Proletarian, Proletarian Revolution. The author wrote that the main task of memoirs is telling the factual material. It means uh, that it was necessary to write about revolutionary events in some cities in great details. 
Um, also, it uh, must be admitted that the author focused the reader's attention on the fact that everybody had to learn how to write the equally, both member of the party and walk. In fact, this article declared the basic principles of writing memoirs in the 1920s. Joseph Gallis criticized very strongly memoirs in which the author spoke a lot about himself. Such memoirs mostly does not reflect reality and so in a favorable light for the central person. These memoirs are harmful to young generation and they are influencing and hypnotizing them. The article was divided into blocks of what is necessary to write and what is not. So, time uh, and place of the revolutionary events, which social groups, political parties and organizers took part, uh, characterization of political leaders, description of events should be indicated. Gallis wrote that, is, uh, that it's not necessary to write about external events which were not close to the main memoir's topic. And of course, Gallis recommended uh, to reminiscences authors avoid, avoid des uh, describing their role in the revolutionary events. So, uh, the author could not be in the center of his own memoir. According to the detailed instructions how to write memoirs about the October Revolution, which were published in the magazine of all Ukrainian this part, uh, called Litopus Revolution, memoirs should be written according to the established rules. During the 1920s, several dozen memoirs were published in this magazine, and almost of them uh, were written according to the rules. The authors of memoirs, which were published in the Litopolis Revolution, mostly followed the instructions. Moreover, uh, their memoirs were checked uh, in detail by members of this party. Also, I must admit uh, that in most cases, uh, the authors of memoirs published in the Litopolis Revolution were famous Bolsheviks and members of party. Reminiscences of ordinary revolution as usual, these were focus were placed in special collections of memoirs and in local newspapers. After comparing the memoirs of party leaders and simple workers, we can see some differences. In spite of instructions, members, <laughs> uh, member of party and worker wrote in different ways. Bolsheviks followed to his part recommendations more than the workers. Many points of the abstract minimum for members were absent in the memoirs of workers. Uh, so, uh, since sometimes simple um, workers did not uh, know all details, as a result, they could not answer to all questions. In addition, a lot of people in the USSR were illiterate or only learned how to write, and many ordinary members of revolutionary events belonged to this category. According to this, the text of memoirs were simpler than text of the Bolsheviks. In general, these recommendations did not provide a planned result. This part could uh, con control its own press, in our case, its uh, materials in the Topos Revolution, but not uh, all the memoirs which were published in the country were written by the rules. Particularly, one major difference should be emphasized <coughs> in the memoirs from newspapers, also could be in the center of his uh, uh, own reminiscences. In publications of his part, this is uncommon. In addition, in newspapers, the memoirs about the revolution were often connected to the stories about Ossus' family. Comparing these two types of memoirs about the October Revolution, we may see that his part created a certain type of right memoirs, which were placed in certain publications, but his part was unable to completely control the process of October remembrance in the society. <coughs> there, are, there are four memoirs which were published in the press. In the press, differed very much from the publication of his part. The situation occurred since it was impossible to keep under control on newspapers, especially given the fact that his part had problems with staff. Sometimes local departments of his part consisted from one two peoples only. Therefore. All the points from the abstract minimum for memoirs and methodological essay by Josef Gellis were implemented not fully. Despite the fact that in the memoirs published in the newspapers, main attention 
uh, was on revolutionary events on some plants or factories. Still, a key role belonged to the author. The second reason why during the writing memoirs authors did not follow to every requirement was complex to describe uh, all of 40 points in a small article. Therefore, usually only one or several aspects were described. Mostly, these were the first points from the abstract minimum for memoirs, which deal with the activities of organizations and institutions. But newspaper articles about the revolution cannot be called drawn from its past point of view, because in all of them were about a certain revolutionary events, which the authors called the October Revolution. The authors wrote about revolution, revolution's participants and movements. In this case, we can see the uh, influence of the uh, Joseph Gallis article. Therefore, the instructions affected the writing style of the members' authors in Soviet newspapers. But their compliance was partial because these instructions were prepared primarily for members that were published in magazines of this part, such as Likokos Revolucy and Special Collection of Reminiscence. In conclusion, I want to remind that construction memos about the October Revolution was used by Bolsheviks for the creation of their own correct history. Also, during the writing memos, by following to some rules, new Soviet men learned how to think and how to speak about themselves as part of great events, the October Revolution. In the reminiscences about the... Uh, uh, in the reminiscences about the... October reader, October readers can easily see the revolution, but it's difficult for them to imagine the author's portrait and understand his reasons. It's part developed special rules for writing memoirs, but their enforcement in various publications was different. Despite this, uh, the first memory project became the basis for future memorial practices and transformed the Soviet Union into an empire of memory. Thank you very much, Oksana, also for respecting the time, which is quite limited. I will ask Agnieszka to do the same, if possible. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I might have problems with sticking to time. No, yeah, I will try to do this. Yeah? The project is for, for Catholics with the last one. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, the title of my present, my paper is uh, Spinners of the Post-Revolutionary Reality, Constructing History of the Left in the Memoirs of Polish communist women in the 1960s and the first part is uh, a quote from uh, Marcianna Fornauska's diary of a mother we will turn every job into a battle outpost uh, so I will be partly uh, speaking and partly reading uh, in, the 60, in the 1960s of the 20th century a voracious boom of life writing took place in Poland the publishing market was flooded with autobiographies, diaries, memoirs written down by members of social groups that had acquired agency following Second World War, such as peasants, blue-collar workers, working intelligentsia, and women. A considerable segment of the life writing of those times was represented by autobiographies of women involved in communist activity since times before the war. Many of them who belonged to the power-wielding allies of post-war Poland found themselves on political retirement following 1956 when Władysław Gomułka took the helm of the party and of the entire country in the wake of the workers' protests. Their banishment uh, of the margins, uh, onto the margins of political life formed part of a broad-scale process of purification of party ranks. Uh, uh, to be short, um, uh, women uh, and uh, Jews uh, were, uh, who were associated with the uh, Stalinist period uh, in the de-Stalinization uh, period uh, were expelled from the um, party uh, uh, yes, in the 1956 and the situation um, was repeated in uh, March 1968. I will go to that uh, later. Uh, of course, this phenomenon of purification uh, of uh, the um, Socialist Party or Communist Party in the 1956 wasn't um, specific to Poland only. This uh, process, uh, in the process of uh, the Stalinization, which rolled through 
uh, all of Central and Eastern Europe uh, deprived many women, post-war communist uh, dignitaries of uh, power. Uh, what I'm interested uh, in this um, article uh, is uh, the analysis of the intense process of autobiographication that took place parallel uh, to the Stalinization, that is the telling of the stories of these this communist women's lives. Um, yes, uh, I think that the, uh, the uh, analysis of this uh, autobiography is, in, uh, is interesting not only because the lives of those women themselves, but because these uh, memoirs uh, uh, put life on the history of communist movement in various countries and regions, but also on the pan-European history of communism, uh, simultaneously created uh, by the authors in the gesture of narrativization. Because um, uh, this uh, process of autobiographication took place not only, of course, in Poland, but uh, in other countries as well, uh, namely in uh, the Soviet Union, but also in Italy or in Spain. And there are a lot of publications uh, uh, which analyze this uh, phenomenon of, um, uh, of uh, memoirs of, ex uh, ex, uh, of communist uh, ex-dignitaries, and um, uh, many of them were uh, female. Uh, this, uh, uh, these memoirs are interesting uh, for me, uh, not only because they uh, present uh, the lives of those uh, authors, uh, but also uh, because I uh, treat them as a sort of critical intervention into the reality uh, contemporary to the moment of writing down their memoirs, namely late 50s and uh, early uh, 60s. Um, uh, what is uh, what what they uh, describe is the uh, history, um, uh, the history of the communist movement, but also the history of Europe, uh, tracing back to the pre-war times, uh, and in certain cases even to times from before the First World War. Uh, they uh, uh, refer to such events as uh, the revolution of or uprising of the 1905 men mentioned here today but also the October Revolution, but also the um, fight against the white terror in uh, uh, interwar uh, Poland, uh, but also um, uh, the um, participation in Spanish uh, Civil War. Uh, what's interesting uh, to me is uh, that, uh, that these memoirs reconstruct the heroic uh, past of the communist movement, but at the same time that they judge um, authorities uh, in the post-Stalinist uh, uh, period, uh, and they, they, let, let's say they ask question how these new authorities in this post-Stalinist period are faithful, uh, how, how, how they remain faithful to communist ideals uh, and um, values. Uh, that is why um, I perceive that the function of these uh, memoirs is both nostalgic and, let's say, therapeutic, but on the other hand, it's uh, interventionist. Uh, if we refer to the wor uh, to works by uh, John Austin on speech acts, uh, we could um, call this uh, memoirs uh, as a type of acting through words, a continuation of a battle waged by the authors when they were still in power. In power. Um, these communist uh, activists, uh, uh, about uh, whose uh, memoirs I'm, I'm talking uh, today, uh, uh, worked uh, through, with words and through words in the times they, uh, when they were politically active. Namely, uh, all of them or most of them were writers, journalists, agitators, instructors, editors and teachers. Uh, and the um, act of writing their memoirs uh, I perceive as another effort on the path uh, uh, of achieve, toward achievement of the uh, overreaching political goal, namely the political and educational uh, task. Uh, that is why this, uh, these authors uh, couldn't be perceived uh, only as spinners of, let's say, uh, banal uh, reality, but they are, I perceive them as uh, the spinners of revolutionary uh, reality. Uh, uh, and uh, in the act of writing, they are not only they are no longer political retirees or ex-soldiers, but they are still in the game, let's say, in the political game. Uh, the second part uh, is a quote uh, from um, a memoir, uh, Zofia Dzierżyńskaya, Years of Great Battles, uh, and the um, quote is, we must reconstruct our own past. 
Uh, what's uh, interesting is, uh, of course, that this um, uh, memoirs I, 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 I talk about uh, correspond with the interests of uh, the communist authorities uh, in uh, uh, Gomuka, but also other uh, p uh, politicians uh, in the post-1956 uh, period were very interested in production of uh, memoirs and interviews with ex, uh, or not only ex, uh, communist uh, dignitaries. Um, uh, Polish historian uh, Martin Zaremba observes that, um, uh, that this uh, political uh, these, these politicians uh, were mostly interested in the history of the newest uh, Polish Communist parties, namely uh, Polish Workers' Part Party, but also <coughs> Polish United Workers' Party. Uh, but they weren't so interested in the uh, history uh, of, let's say, uh, the um, Polish uh, uh, communists who spent the uh, war in the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, my um, my um, protagonists, uh, these are uh, the um, communists uh, who uh, who spent the war, the Second World War, in uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, who they who were they? Uh, they were all uh, these women were all uh, associated with uh, Gomułka's uh, predecessor uh, crew, uh, Bolesław Bierut. Until uh, 1939, they were all involved in radically, le uh, radically leftist illegal activities uh, in the structures of uh, social democracy of the Kingdom of Poland and Lithuania, and after that, Communist Party of Poland. Uh, many of them were imprisoned in Tsarist uh, times and or in the independent Poland in the inter uh, interwar uh, period, uh, <coughs> uh, and when the uh, Second World War broke out, they were found found themselves in the uh, Soviet Union. Um, uh, and these um, pages from their biographies, which were uh, very important in the uh, post uh, post war time, uh, in um, the times of Gomułka's. Uh, um, uh, rule, uh, they were a sort of inconvenient. Uh, the um, boom of the memoirs took place in the late 1950s and in early uh, 1960s. Uh, most of them describe, uh, refer to the October Revolution uh, and participation of uh, Polish, uh, not only Polish, but communists of various nationalities, including uh, Poles, in October uh, Revolution. Uh, they um, they bring uh, the. Um, enthusiastic uh, description of uh, brave, active, uh, and full of commitment uh, participation uh, of those uh, revolutionaries in the October uh, Revolution. They bring the spirit of uh, fraternity of nations and the zealous uh, internationalism. And this uh, internationalism uh, issue is very important in this, um, in this uh, memoirs. Uh, because um, they present internationalism not as a, let's say, foreign, a Soviet idea, but the element of uh, upbringing uh, uh, of these Polish intellectuals, uh, of their lifestyle, but also the element of their political uh, disputes. Um, uh, but they also say that to be an uh, internationalist uh, doesn't mean uh, uh, to uh, reject the, uh, the uh, Polishness, let's say. So they present the image of Polish internationalists. Uh, the image of those uh, revolutionaries uh, uh, started to change in the late 1960s after the uh, March 1968, uh, which was the time of uh, Let's say anti-Semitic uh, purges uh, in the party, but not only in the party. Uh, in the party, uh, and uh, the um, autobiographies of the late 1960s, uh, um, they 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 uh, start to let's say polonize uh, the biographies of the revolutionaries. For example, uh, Zofia Dzierżynska, 
present the image of her husband, um, Felix Dzierżynski, as a, a, quote, son of the Polish nation, a fighter for your freedom and ours, who became a symbol of fraternity of Polish and Russian uh, nations. And of course, it is interesting uh, uh, why and how this uh, narrative uh, about the October Revolution changed in, uh, during the 60s. Uh, I think that uh, one of the reasons was uh, to, uh, let's say, maneuver of uh, Polish remembrance of October Revolution, uh, rather to present uh, the uh, common uh, enemy, which was Tsar, uh, and the common victory of uh, Slavic nations uh, against uh, the, 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 the Tsar, uh, yes. Uh, the other um, event which is uh, very uh, broadly described uh, is the uh, upbringing of 1905, which is presented as a um, combination of ideas of class struggle and a struggle uh, for freedom. This is uh, like a very important uh, moment in this uh, memoirs because it is presented as a moment of cooperation of various leftist uh, forces uh, in Poland, namely uh, the social democracy of uh, uh, Polish kingdom and uh, uh, of the kingdom of Poland and Lithuania, but also the Polish Socialist Party, uh, the left. Um, which uh, were merged in December 1918 and this uh, merge resulted in the establishment of the Communist Workers' Party uh, of uh, Poland. Uh, the other thing is uh, the uh, moment of uh, fight, for, um, fight for independence in 1918 and this uh, moment is um, a very, uh, let's say, delicate one uh, because Polish communists in that moment they, they uh, weren't very, let's say, happy uh, because of uh, uh, this uh, uh, fight for independence, because they were well, they were following the uh, Rosa Luxemburg uh, um, expectation that the, the uh, forces uh, they were waiting for the forces of Bolsheviks and German communists to join, and that is why <coughs> Polish communists didn't recognize the independence of Poland, and they boycotted the first same election in elections in January 1919. And this um, Rosa Luxemburg uh, <coughs> attitude was uh, after that con condemned by uh, not only by, by, by Polish communists but also by the, um, let's say, international communists. Uh, and it, this was, but in Poland it was uh, called the uh, error of uh, Luxemburgism, Bond Luxemburgismo, or the lefty error. Uh, yeah, probably I'm, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I will uh, try to. Uh, summarize or go to the conclusion uh, because of course uh, the, um, there are a lot of let, uh, more and more um, well, let's say events they, they describe and this event, this description of the event, this narrative is very important uh, not only for the description of the history but this was important in the times uh, uh, in this 1960s in the times when the uh, memoirs were uh, were uh, were published uh, they uh, refer to this uh, mention here this uh, lack of the adjective communist in the post war uh, polish uh, workers uh, party uh, because uh, there is a uh, we see the tension between the, let's say, old communists, this pre-war communists uh, of the Communist Party of Poland and the, let's say, new, old new communists who considered uh, during the war and after the war that the adjective uh, communist uh, was, um, uh, it was a sort of problematic um, during the war and after the war, but we see this disputes, the, 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 the um, the, the description of these disputes, the, the argues uh, between old communists and the new communists, uh, referring not only to the name but to the idea, to the strategy, to the program of the new uh, party. This is all there. Uh, was the new communist, the, the new the socialist party, was it about? Uh, uh, was it to be about the class struggle or was it about to be about the national? Uh, independence, or however uh, we call it, and uh, uh, I'd like to summarize uh, with uh, the um, refer, uh, refer, uh, with the reference to the two uh, memoirs. One written by Maria Kaminska, 
uh, paths of memoirs of 1960, and the other one, uh, Jadwiga Sabina Ludwinska, Road, uh, Roads and People of 1969. Uh, at the beginning of the 60s, Kaminska, Maria Kaminska wrote about the Communist Party of Poland of, uh, of the 1920s. Quote, the party wouldn't be pushed off its track bravely despite the uh, incessant uh, arrest. It faced the wild nationalism spreading from all sides. It stood unwavering on the ground of proletarian internationalism, international workers' solidarity. They shouted traitors at us. We were, we were never that. We dreamt of a Polish Soviet Republic, the homeland of the Polish people, and we acted in its uh, name. In the 1969, after the march of 68, uh, Jadwiga Sabina, Sabina Rutwinska assured only about the Iranian Pol Polish patriotism of communism of the Polish Workers' Party, including uh, Jewish uh, activists. And I would say that um, this... Uh, this difference between the memoirs of uh, uh, Kaminska and Ludwinska uh, show uh, not only the evolution of the party, Polish uh, Communist Party, uh, uh, the strategy, the idea, the uh, attitude toward this tension between class struggle and uh, national struggle, but this is also a confirmation of the bankruptcy of the certain histori historiographic project uh, which the uh, communist life uh, writers undertook. And um, I would say that uh, this was the moment uh, when the, um, uh, when, uh, the uh, communist movement uh, uh, took, let's say, uh, this was the moment uh, when uh, Mm, the communist, uh, um, uh, with the, com the communist uh, movement, uh, maybe not gave up the class struggle, but uh, they uh, reached for the, um, the history of the nation, uh, using it as support, as a prosthesis, yes, uh, which uh, was to keep the entire construction, this this construction of the communist movement, from uh, toppling. Uh, over and uh, I would like to end with a quote from Marx because I think this is what Marx uh, had in mind in this in his uh, uh, work, the 18th Brumaire of uh, Louis Napoleon, when he wrote, "People make their own history themselves, yet they do not make it at will, not in circumstances chosen by them, but rather in those in which they found themselves, which were given or transferred to them. The tradition of all past generations." burns the minds of the living like a ghost. At the very time when men appear engaged in revolutionizing things and themselves, in bringing about what never was before, at such very epochs of revolutionary crisis, do they anxiously conjure up into their service the spirits of the past, assume their names, their battle cries, uh, their costumes to enact a new historic scene in such time honor disguise and with such borrowed language. I have to skip the last part, but in, during the discussion I can like uh, present say more. Thank you very Sorry. much. Thanks also to the technicians because the class struggle is not the only struggle we are struggling right now. Uh, it seems that it is on the best way, but still it's not finally resolved. So maybe if I could make a little small suggestion to open the discussion for the first two presentations and then we'll continue with the third one. So if you have any, any comments or reactions uh, to uh, the presentation of Agnieszka or Oksana, please do it now. Yes, please. Hello, uh, I have a question for Agnieszka. I, I think that you have such a fascinating material. I mean, these, these uh, autobiographies uh, or memoirs written, written by, by women themselves. I was wondering, you didn't mention at all any gender analysis yeah. of, of these memoirs. I was wondering whether, whether there is anything specific to these memoirs, if they ever mention, I mean, you mentioned that, that uh, there, is a, there is a reference back to the Russian Revolution of 1905. I was wondering whether they ever make any referen references to the women's involvement and sort of the first organizing of, of women of, on behalf of women in, uh, in Russia, etc., etc. I'm, ju I'm just like, you know, so curious to know what's uh, uh, in there. 
now or please yeah yeah this was the the, the last the third part uh, my, my my favorite one uh, about this uh, gender aspect of uh, this uh, memoirs of course they write about it a lot about the, uh, their participation in the october revolution about the sexual revolution let's say of the 1920s uh, uh, about the new models of family, the new models of uh, um, of um, gender roles and gender relations, and this is uh, what is, uh, of course, in those uh, memoirs. But I have the feeling that uh, this is something um, that is a bit uh, hidden, or uh, there is something which uh, we are supposed to read uh, in between the lines, let's say, because what is. Uh, uh, what the, because of course there well, uh, there is this uh, what's interesting for me uh, as a um, let's say a gender studies analyst uh, analyst uh, uh, is the fact that they present they say a lot about this uh, public activity of women they present themselves and other women uh, as uh, uh, soldiers or activists uh, for the uh, communist cause and they uh, say very little about or maybe not very little but um, but they say little about their um, roles as mothers as wives as uh, lovers and, and so on this is uh, this is all there but uh, uh, what's uh, more important for them is this uh, public activity and uh, I do not uh, uh, and for me it's okay, uh, for me it's, it's fine because uh, usually the traditional role of Polish woman is this uh, role of the Polish mother, let's say. So for me it's a, a, a sort of a revol revolutionizing attitude toward the uh, gender roles because you see the woman not uh, only as a mother, as a lover, as a wife, as a housewife, but you see a public woman, let's say. A woman who is an activist, uh, who is uh, a thinker, who is a writer, who is uh, uh, who uh, can be arrested like men, who can be um, uh, who can uh, uh, be uh, um, let's say smuggling the leaflets and, and so on. So uh, they they present this uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, um, this 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 the other um, attitude toward the the, the, the the gender roles. But what is interesting to me, and I didn't say about that because I didn't have time, is the fact that what's missing in the, all those memoirs of the 1960s is the uh, times of war and post-war uh, period. This, namely the uh, period uh, which they all uh, built, let's say, because I'm, I'm, I was talking about the memoirs of women who were in power. Uh, after the war, who were the uh, uh, party activists, who were the party officials, but also state officials. And all of them were um, expelled or banished onto the margins of the political life after 1956. And uh, this is very interesting to me, why they do not uh, describe this post-war period. One answer is obvious, because this was the uh, period uh, associated with uh, the Stalinism or the, 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 the name of the, uh, the, the Stalin's name doesn't appear in those uh, uh, memoirs, this is obvious. But the other explanation which I, uh, this is my hypothesis, uh, why they don't uh, describe this uh, post-war time, uh, is because this was uh, the moment when these ideas of this, this new ideas of the, the of uh, uh, redefinition of gender roles, the redefinition of family uh, models, uh, were um, were in the air. Let's say yes. Uh, so uh, after Komuka, uh, when the Komuka took power in 1956, and the process of traditionalization of gender roles started in Poland. All this was like, you know, uh, inconvenient. All this was, you know, uh, uh, wasn't supposed to be mentioned. Uh, but uh, this is not so easy with those memoirs because this is all there. But you have to like uh, read it because this is like a, in between the lines. But it is there. For example, the name of uh, Alexandra Kowalczyk appears in those uh, memoirs. This, uh, this. Um, this Russian feminist, yes, and uh, revolutionary, and her idea of uh, sexual li liberation. This is all there, yes. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. Further comments? I've seen Standa and then Antony. Standa, please. 
Uh, thank you, Agnieszka. I have as well comment on you. I really enjoy your presentation. I was as well asking, first of all, why gender at all? Why not to extend uh, uh, your analysis on all of the memories? I can suppose, like in such a case, maybe 90% would be written by male. Yeah, but uh, I didn't see this gender aspect. And the uh, second point, actually, how many memoirs you analyze at all? I missed this information. And uh, third. Uh, I think uh, what is actually most interesting is something like what I call counter memory. Yeah. If there are some counter memories, you know, like people who've been purged, like Trotsky's, and then they sit down in the 60s and they wrote uh, their memoirs, and their memoirs has been probably not published but circulating around Byzance. Because I, I know personally really well the situation of Czechoslovak communists, and actually these memories who were published like officially. They are, I found them like useless now because they are written with such wooden language, trying to omit all important point. Yeah, what what is interesting that uh, like you know the interwar communist party has been very uh, multi-ethnic, yeah. and of course uh, in uh, the memoirs from the 50s, 60s, the Germans and Jews were mar marginalized. You have an impression this was just Czechs being in communist party. Yeah. But uh, uh, I found actually the most interesting those who were purged and who published like as dissents their memoirs like from the 30s. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, uh, how many memoirs uh, did I uh, analyze? I don't. I don't know. Maybe 30, 40, something like this. I start uh, the 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 the. the uh, the first memoirs I have analyzed were written in the late uh, 50s, 1958, something like this, and uh, uh, the, 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 the newest one are uh, of the um, late 80s and even uh, early 90s, because some of them were uh, they, uh, published after the, the authors uh, died. Um, Gender aspect uh, of this, uh, this uh, memoirs. Well, I, I try to de 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 describe this one. Uh, I uh, I'm, I'm writing my dissertation, my habilitation about the communist women uh, in pre and post war Poland. So maybe this is uh, why I only focus on uh, the, uh, the the gender. Uh, this this women's uh, memoirs, but also there is there is something like this that. Uh, Traditionally, uh, these are uh, women who are responsible for the production of the, let's say, culture memory of the uh, of the uh, of the past. Of course, men were also writing their uh, uh, men also wrote their, their, their memoirs, uh, and uh, probably I will have to compare this 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 types of uh, narrative. But uh, yeah, what I'm interested in is the women's. Uh, Counter, counter memory. Yes, this is a very, very good uh, question because I have the feeling that uh, these women are in the, let's say, the double position. Because on the one hand, uh, they they are uh, the they were the party officials and state officials till 1956, but they are still somehow connected with the party. Yes, this is this is not the, the fact that they were, uh, let's say. Um, Put on a political retirement doesn't mean that they uh, uh, like broke the ties uh, with the, the, the party. But uh, on the other hand, uh, there is this uh, let's say maybe not critical uh, attitude. But there, I call I, I would like to I'd rather call it a interventionist uh, or uh, trying to negotiate the memory of the past. Uh, so maybe it's not a um, counter memory in the sense of Foucault, yes, but there is some something between. Uh, you are uh, st still feel the, the the part of this uh, group or the environment of uh, the people with uh, with whom you you fought, but you are somewhere on the in the margins. But there is also the fact of the loyalty. I think uh, all those people, those, those women, and those uh, men were very, uh, were still loyal to their comrades. Let's say. So you did not find any memory of somebody who has been purged, like already in the 30s, and published like later on this mem these memoirs. Yes, I, 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 yes, I read, uh, yes, I, I read such memoir. Um, what's her name? 
Celina uh, Budzinska, uh, Shreds of Family Saga. It was published in uh, 1997. Uh, but this is a very interesting, uh, for, for, for example, for literary critics uh, a type of uh, memoirs because it, she started to write her memoir in the 60s and she finished it uh, before her death. And you see in the, uh, subti um, in the subtitles of it, comments, uh, that, uh, the, the evolution of the narration. Yeah, I have to, yeah, sorry, I have to sorry. intervene into yeah. the privatization of the discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have seen another reaction. There, let's take a roll of the, of, the, of the comments, if it's possible. There was one and there was a second one, so I see you as well, finally. Please. Um, my question is for Aksana. First of all, thank you for your fascinating presentation. Um, you ended your, your talk by referring to the Soviet Empire of memory. Um, and what I was wondering is how specifically um, is this dynamic that, that you referred to a Soviet thing? Um, and the reason why I ask this is uh, I was at a, another talk a few weeks ago uh, by Professor Catherine Lebeau, maybe her work is familiar to some of you. Um, and she was talking about um, memoirs and specifically memoir competitions in interwar Poland. And it seemed that in the interwar period, all over um, Western Europe and, and in the United States, there was an explosion of, of memoir writing and, and interest in having working class um, individuals write their memoirs. And it was sort of a, a part of a project of, of ethnographic um, mapping of the working classes. So what I'm wondering is, is memoir writing, how, how, what exactly is about it is Soviet in, in the dynamic that you describe? And what is it that's part of the, the general cultural trajectories um, of the West? Uh, I will take one more, one more intervention of Jakub, please. Okay. Uh, Jakub Szumski, Polish Academy of Sciences. I've got a comment and a question for Agnieszka. Uh, the first thing is that you uh, need to note that all of these women that you've described are from a very uh, specific generation. This yes. is a very, a very important factor. Yes. A very um, specific um, social group based in the communist youth, most of all, and then spending the war in the Soviet Union. Uh, a lot of times with an experience in Comintern school in, in, in Moscow. Uh, a um, symbol hero for them would be Roman Zambrowski. Um, a very peasant uh, um, person, Polish, um, Polish National Party secretary, responsible for cadres, personnel. So he was very influential after the war uh, to place those who, th those women on such posts as personal secretary, organization secretary, all over the country. In a lot of cases, they didn't know anything about this territory that they were sent to, uh, especially on the so-called recover, recover territories in, in Western Poland. And um, the question is, uh, why do you think that this is the, uh, let's say, the only moment in which women are so influential, and women are so particular? Um, the first period of post-war Poland until 56, as you've said, yeah. I think that uh, the fact that they were women wasn't um, wasn't the decisive element that they were purged after 56. Uh, they were uh, belonging to a coterie, to a clique that was being purged, and uh, no matter women or female or male, they were uh, to be marginalized. Um, and the, the second moment in which women grew a little bit uh, into influence in the, into the public sphere was the late years, the 80s. We've got two members of the Politburo, first in the 81, Zofia Grzyb, and then another one, I don't remember her name, but uh, this was a, uh, let's say, a, uh, a try to get a new legitimization uh, strategy of, of inclusion uh, of women. And why do you think that uh, women played part only in this first period and the last, and they were uh, not that present in those middle years? Thank you. Are there any further comments or reactions to Agnieszka or Oksana at this moment? So if not, I'll ask you to re reply the question and we'll continue with Catherine, please. Uh, thank you. Question. <coughs> uh, 
uh, in the uh, in the interval period in the Soviet Union, uh, memory was constructed by the Communist Party, um, and um, uh, in the time there were two state commissions. Uh, first commission is this part, and the second commission uh, was. Uh, a uh, commission on the history of the factory, factories and uh, these state uh, commissions create a special rules how to write memoirs and uh, uh, this uh, was the way to teach people to write and think about themselves in the right uh, way and uh, um, um, this uh, these special rules, uh, when people think about these rules, they uh, try to uh, think about power in the correct way. And uh, these special memoirs uh, and reminiscences uh, were published in special uh, magazines. Uh, but um, when people uh, wrote diaries, it was very um, it, it's very interesting for scientists today uh, because uh, in diaries, of, especially of workers, we can see uh, how people think about uh, the Communist Party and how their attitude um, was changed. Uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, this um, uh, first uh, memory uh, projects campaigned to were, uh, were very important for future, especially after the Second World War, uh, because in the Soviet Union um, during all the period, uh, memory was constructed on the power. And um, this uh, first memoirs about the October Revolution was the basis for future. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, uh, this generation issue, I think, yes, of course, I agree, it's a very important uh, aspect of my analysis, but uh, I do not uh, perceive generation in, let's say, Mannheim, I, well, I perceive it not in a biological terms, namely the date of uh, birth. Uh, I would uh, use rather a sociological Mannheim's analysis of the uh, generation, this is one thing, but for me as a uh, literary critic or intellectual literary studies, a uh, more important uh, thing is the issue of uh, narrative of generation. These women, uh, in other words, uh, the question who produces the generation, who has the right to speak uh, uh, as the, uh, uh, in the name of the generation. Yes, so, uh, so the issue of generation is more complex than you presented it. Uh, so this is one thing. Uh, the other thing is this, uh, uh, let's say, purges of women uh, in 1956. Uh, I, um, in the, let's say, uh, popular uh, Polish imagination, the uh, Stalinist, uh, Stalinist period is considered uh, uh, with the uh, rules of uh, women and Jews or uh, namely, the, is um, this um, stereotype or myth of Judeo-Communism, but also the rule of the women as uh, uh, significant for the uh, Stalinist period, namely the the the, the word the word which is uh, put on its head, uh, put outside the upside down, and the Stalinization is uh, presented in this popular imagination or the popular narrative as the. Um, as the time of uh, making things right, making th uh, things traditional, namely all those bad women, all those bad Jews, all those uh, Judeo communists go away, and now we have this uh, Polish communist uh, presented, uh, led by uh, Władysław Gomułka. This is his idea of uh, the Polish road to communism, yes? So uh, to make it happen, to make the Polish road uh, uh, to communism uh, happen, you had to. Uh, like expelled uh, all those uh, undesirable elements, uh, of course connected with the previous equipe, uh, uh, the previous crew, namely, namely the Bolesław Bielus uh, uh, crew, but uh, uh, the, the situation looked like uh, this, that in his uh, Bielus uh, crew there were, uh, there were 
men and women, and there were uh, Polish uh, communists of Jewish origin. So, like, you know, expelling them is like making the uh, place for the uh, for the uh, right Polish uh, communists. So this is the the, the other thing. Uh, the fact of the Polish, the, the political recognition of women in the 1940s and 1950s, because this is what is interesting uh, to me. I do not uh, perceive this uh, presence, this this presence of women, uh, only through the, uh, uh, the the perspective of their participation in the party cadres. For example, uh, I per I perceive the, their uh, their activity or their uh, importance in this uh, 1940s and 1950s because uh, uh, I'm interested in uh, I'm interested in uh, their uh, political activity in the broader sense, not only uh, their um, be, uh, their being members of the party, but also uh, uh, like. Uh, for example, being the uh, editors in chief of uh, important uh, magazines, being editors of uh, the um, important publishing houses, uh, to be uh, the um, uh, let's say uh, the head, for example, of the uh, women's uh, division of the party. For example, there was uh, yeah, uh, Edwarda Orłowska, who up until 1950. Three had been the head of the women's division of the uh, Polish Workers' Party uh, and also long-term same deputy. Janina Broniewska, who is uh, known as the wife of a uh, poet, Władysław Broniewski, was editor-in-chief of uh, the Women magazine until 1953 and the secretary of the Basic Party Organization, the Council Board of the Polish uh, Writers' Union. There was also Jadwiga Siekierska, who had been the member of the Council on Culture and Art in 1957. Um, there was also Maria Kaminska mentioned by me, who was the director of the training department of the Ministry of Public Security. So they were uh, they were not only because in po in Polish historiography uh, uh, the uh, importance is measured uh, by the importance in the uh, party. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. All of those posts. Yeah are so-called nomenclatura posts, yeah. so they are appointed by the political. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, all of those women mm -hmm. either personally know someone from the Politburo mm -hmm. or are personally appointed by them. Yeah, and so what? And the men as well. <laughs> no, but um, it's, not it's, not, there's, it's not separate. It's not separate. Uh, the fact that uh, a lot of women were present in, in the publishing houses in uh, Pewen, so the Polish scientific publishing house and so on and so on, those are all posts uh, appointed by the party. And if they would not be communists mm -hmm. and uh, would, they wouldn't have this trust uh, laid to them, appointed to them by the, by the communist uh, leaders, they wouldn't have those opportunities. Yeah, but 1956, there was also communism in Poland, yes, or this uh, socialism, real socialism, and many of those women lost their posts. So what what's interesting to me is the fact that in the post-war period, there were many of them, and then they were like expelled or banished onto the merges. This yeah, is what's I, interesting I, I, to me. Yeah. Dear colleagues, I apologize, let's again not spread so, the discussion, and uh, I finally resolved some technical issues, so I'm turning it to my work of chair. I just wanted to make a small comment on Oksana's uh, presentation. It was challenging at certain moments, she was saying the Soviet Union could be presented, presented as an empire of memoirs, which is very interesting for me because what always do you imagine Soviet Union as something projected to the future, you know, uh, in uh, building the communism in the future and so on. So let's just make, let's think about this and speak about this uh, through the lunch. I will ask Katarin if uh, he can present his uh, okay. I will be presentation. Very, very short. Very, very, very short. short. You can see the title disappear. Thanks a lot. I will read for you. It is historical memory of communist Romania's sports between nostalgia and Romanianization. Okay, so what I would like to, to begin with is that uh, I think uh, two, are, uh, two are the most uh, defining features of the Romanian sport during the communist uh, regime. Um, on, the one, on the one hand, the long list of uh, performances, both at clubs and the national teams level, 
and uh, on the other hand, the, the various policies of uh, Romanization implanted, uh, implemented by the, by the state. And while the, the former is still uh, strongly rooted in the historical memory, being part of the nostalgic discourse regarding Romanian communists, the latter is basically uh, absent from the same historical memory. So very short, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's relevant, um, as you can as you can see, I um, I started with two two studies made uh, in the in the last five years, uh, where uh, I don't know seven uh, sixty percent or eighty three percent of of the of the people say that they think that the Romanian communist regime was a good idea or that they did not suffer anything during the, the communist regime and so on. And I'd like to explain among others that um, this, this kind of, um, of studies um, or this kind of opinion um, are, um, are also um, rooted in uh, in what happened in uh, Romania in communist Romania's sport and I will stop to, to football um, for example in the 50s 60s and 80s there were um, a lot of um, high uh, level performances in the Romanian football the most important is that the title of European Champions in 1962 at under-18 level and then the, um, the success in uh, what is now UEFA Champions League of uh, Steaua Bucharest in 1986. And for example, after that, uh, that success in what is now Champions League, back then they, it had another name, the whole team uh, was um, invited by uh, Nicolae Ceausescu, but uh, I don't know what his palace, and there were, uh, there were a lot of, um, there are a lot of events because of course the, the regime had to, had to um, refer himself to, to, this, uh, to this success. Um, the same happened of course in 1962 when um, it was another ruler in Romania, before Ceausescu, Gheorghe Dej. And uh, as you can see, uh, the European um, triumph was also highlighted in, uh, in press and uh, on every public, uh, in every public way. However, and this is where I, where I want to, to reach, uh, to go now, um, all these all this, uh, great uh, football performances uh, were of course part of the official historical memory of communist Romania. But uh, in the background there are some hidden stories. For example, when Romania won this uh, under-18 European Championship in 1962, they, uh, they won the, the final uh, against Yugoslavia 4-1, but as you can see, despite the fact that the championship was uh, at under 18 level, Romania managed somehow to, to have players of 20, 22 years, and actually there is only one guy who, who was uh, under 18 from, from, the whole, from the whole squad. Um, then there is another another hidden story uh, regarding the Romanianization. And very shortly, when the when the national team uh, was founded in 1922, uh, basically at least uh, uh, basically there was no um, ethnic Romanian player in the in the squad. So you can see the first Romanian national football team in 19. 22, and there was uh, only one guy who was an ethnic Romanian, uh, the others being, I don't know, Hungarians, uh, even Czechs, um, Jews, uh, Germans from 
Transylvania, of course. And uh, in the interwar period, the, the, um, there was a huge debate about this uh, symbol of Romanian national identity, composed of uh, representatives of minorities. But however, despite the state's um, interventions, the Romanization, uh, Romanianization in football failed. The main explica explanation being the huge difference of football tradition and high performance between Transylvania and the Old Kingdom, so what is now around Bucharest, let's say. Uh, and surprisingly, it was the communist regime who, who managed to Romanianize the, the national football team, because, for example, the first national football team uh, after the proclamation of the Communist Popular Republic of Romania had basically the same, uh, the same composition. From the 11, actually 12 players, only two were, were Romanians in 1980, uh, 48, yeah. uh, As you can see, uh, this was how uh, um, Romanian football match was uh, was playing with uh, players uh, right with the, the spectators with the fans uh, right next to, to the players as you can see in the photo below and uh, there was a huge uh, success with this with this um, football uh, with this sport in Romania in communist Romania and beginning with the mid 1970s the quota of the representatives of ethnic minorities began to decrease significantly so in only one decade of uh, communist <coughs> regime uh, the national uh, team uh, had be uh, had uh, i mean became uh, to had only ethnic uh, only one um, only had only ethnic romanian players or uh, players coming from uh, Bucharest clubs instead of uh, instead of Transylva uh, instead of Transylvanian clubs, and this is what I call uh, somehow uh, uh, a communist formula of the Romanian national identity, because uh, the Romanian uh, the communist regime um, somehow implemented implemented the, the idea that Romania had to be represented internationally only by ethnic Romanians. And this radical change happened due to uh, some political and ideological reasons. For example, uh, the doubts against the Hungarian ethnics after the Hungarian Revolution in 1956 contributed to a much uh, careful, let's say, selection for the Romanian national team. And in the, in the same time, um, the Transylvanian clubs, for example, were being imposed to have uh, only a quota of players coming from the ethnic minorities. Uh, other uh, communist measures in, uh, in this um, particular um, segment were uh, the, the investments and transfers in football pitches in Bucharest, uh, the dissolution of the so-called bourgeois clubs, and, and so on. And um, once uh, this uh, Romanization process achieved, uh, the communist uh, regime took uh, the, um, this dimension on a level close, I, I can say maybe it's a very hard and harsh word, to dementia, following the, the official ideology of national communism. But I, I'll explain to you why I, I uh, called it uh, the dementia of Romani Romanianization. It's a horrible word, Romanianization. Yeah? Um, for example, when we had a Hungarian uh, high-profile football player, the first thing was to, to um, transliterate the, the name uh, following the Romanian rules. So we, as you can see, you pronounce the same Mujnai, but uh, you can uh, you write the name in Romanian, let's say. When we have uh, a player like Laszlo Nog, the, we, the communist, basically translated his name. So uh, the name of Laszlo Nog is in Romanian Vasile Mare, which means the translation, so big uh, basil, let's say, in, in English. Um, 
and you can see a lot of uh, lot of similar uh, similar examples. And for example, in the last decade of the communist regime in the 1980s, uh, only three representatives of the ethnic minorities played constantly for the Romanian national team: a Hungarian, uh, a Saxon, and uh, a Serbian. Who uh, the Serbian who basically uh, was uh, also uh, erased from the official memory during the communist regime because he uh, escaped. Uh, the, the communist uh, regime to Yugoslavia. Uh, okay, I have stopped because I think everybody is hungry. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I have some <laughs> conclusions, but. <laughs> make it a conclusion. Yeah, make it a conclusion. Yes, I, what I would like to, to say in the end is that. Um, <laughs> We have on the on the one hand these uh, communist uh, grassroots policies and these investments and uh, a lot of encouragement in sports, as well as the the, the, the establishment of the two departmental clubs, like uh, it happened in uh, almost every communist country. So a club associated with the national defense and the club with the Ministry of the Internal Affairs. In Romania, Steaua and Dinamo were the two clubs, in Bucharest, of course. And all these measures uh, clearly elevated the, um, the performances and made uh, from the Romanian clubs and uh, national teams a uh, force in several uh, sports, even in football, on the European uh, scene. Part of the fight, of course, on the sports ground between the West and uh, the East. But on the other hand, um, this, um, these um, factors that contributed to, to, the, to all these performances had a very, very strong uh, political and national uh, dimension in the sense that the sports became the ground for implementing, uh, for example, policies of Romani Romanianization because both during uh, during both Georgian uh, and Ceausescu regimes, Romania had to be represented internationally, like I said, by ethnic Romanians or at least by persons bearing Romanian names despite their uh, ethnic origins. And the Romanian national football team was an example in that uh, in that di direction. Well, yes, that, that's it. Perfect, Catherine. Thank you very much. Let's... Um, the issue of football is very important to the identification of oneself either with the country or the regime or as you name it. So let's let's make some comments towards, uh, towards the presentation of Catherine, please. Hello. I know I'm going to touch you because you are all hungry, but I still cannot <coughs> omit a, 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 some comments. I think uh, great analysis, I really like it. I think Romania is a special case with national communism and its manifestation in all different aspects of social life, including sports. Yes, so this is a great uh, field of interest. Um, I was thinking, uh, first of all, is football different from other Romanian sport, or we can speak about similar tendencies in all Romanian sports? Like I know there has been, for example, this good Romanian gymnastics and so on. Yeah. So this, well, this is very one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and second, what I was actually lacking in your analysis is something like more detailed picture of this uh, um, actors. Uh, like, who, who was it deciding you change your name? Was it like even the players willingly they, that they knew the authorities do not like Hungarian names, so they willingly change from their own initiative, or this was just authorities came and say you change your name, or uh, how deep was this change of name? Was it just uh, Romanized name was published and you could still keep in your uh, passport, passport like your own version, or you have to, or they they change like uh, the complete name. So this this I would like I would like to know a bit more. Maybe okay. let's try to collect the yes, please. I've got another question. It's concerning uh, 
the overall homogenization, ethnic homogenization, homogenization of uh, post-war Romania. But you studied this case of, uh, of the homogenization of the football team, also in the context of the overall homogenization, because you know that there was a Holocaust and then a large migration of the Jews out of, out of Romania. There was a permanent migration of the people of, uh, of German origin, like out of the, to Germany. Uh, there was also oppression of, of the Hungarians, which uh, they were not expelled from due to Hungary, but, uh, but the number was decreasing all the time. So if you studied like the uh, coincidence or kind of a parallel between those two verses. Thank you. Other questions, comments? So, everybody's hungry, really, as you yeah. said, so please try to reply. Short, an short answers. Um, yeah, there were similar um, situations in, uh, in other sports. For example, the um, handball team. Handball team, yeah, was composed mainly of German players from Transylvania, of course. The national hockey, ice hockey team, even today is composed only of Hungarian players from uh, two counties in the middle of uh, Romania. Hungarian, more precisely, uh, settlers. And uh, I was uh, interested, and I uh, I looked for for similar for similar um, things happening during the communist regime with uh, with other sports, but the most um, the most clear uh, the clearest example is with the with the football national with the national football team, because it was uh, also very. Um, very, uh, I don't know, established, very well established in the discourse, in the memory, and even in the newspapers. So it's uh, when I when I write about football, I also write about the other sports, but football remains, uh, I don't know, on the, on the first place. And uh, regarding the names. Uh, Oh, I, I omitted to, to, uh, to tell that, um, to say that all these uh, players with uh, the names changed were uh, high profile players, so uh, they played for the national team or they were transferred in uh, Bucharest, these uh, departmental clubs. So um, they uh, basically were uh, not necessarily forced, but they were. Uh, they were said they were yeah um, by the um, ministry of the internal affairs or by the ministry of national defense that it is better to to change the name because uh, it is better to have a name uh, a romanian name despite the the, the ethnic so it was uh, it was uh, semi official let's say but it was uh, on a, it was coming it came from the highest level um, and of course, there were some examples of uh, of players who invented uh, names. It was one one guy, uh, Seke Lajo or something like this, and he became Dan Daniel. So without any resemblance, he he just he just uh, invented a name. And there are a lot of nice stories, but <laughs> with with the names of the players. And uh, regarding uh, what you what you were asking me, uh, I I'm not sure if I understood uh, if I studied this uh, particular uh, dimension within a broader context. No. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah yes. The problem was that it might be it now from your presentation it looked that it was the it was the like the individual attempt of the communist party but we have to no, no, put no, it no, into no. the broader context of, of permanent homogenization of folks and uh, this uh, i mean the subject uh, mm, i also studied the subject in the interwar period and uh, of course i i integrated this uh, tiny football story in the larger in the larger context in the, of the interwar years when uh, anti-Semitism anti and, uh, I don't know, nationalism were, uh, were very, very powerful in, uh, in, in Romania, in the, 
in Inter or Romania. So somehow I try to, to explain why uh, this uh, Romanianization did not succeed in the interior years and paradoxically succeeded in the first, let's say, 10 or 15 years of communist regime in Romania. So thanks to the speakers again. If there are not no, any other sudden reactions, comments or anything else to be said to anybody of the three uh, present, um, I would declare then a break for the lunch. Uh, we have inherited half an hour, we finished with half an hour delay. Maybe uh, let's shorten the lunch for 15 minutes then, no? I think, I think we, can, we can make an hour. Okay, so let's let's meet here in an hour, so it means half past uh, one. Uh, sorry, before uh, you go to lunch, uh, I repeat, those uh, who have to clarify some financial stuff uh, come to me. And the uh, uh, second uh, point, we are selling some books from our production, so for those who read it, check, you can buy them. So thank you. Thank you.